Bill, you're a market timer. You use cycles. There's a lot of cycles of asset classes in flux now. Let's talk about stocks first. Stocks uh, have pulled back from their highs. Uh, May was, a, was an awful month. Is this a big downtrend? Or is this a correction and an uptrend? The intermediate cycle topped on the 1st of June. I actually expected the market to hold up into the 3rd, but it hasn't even held up that long. So that tells you that the market is weak right here. I expect it to bottom in the 3rd or 4th week of June. All right. Well, I mean, are we going to go back to the lows of 2009, or is this just a little blip in the uptrend? This is a blip in the uptrend. There are a couple of reasons to be thinking that. Number one, if you look at the AAI, AAII poll of investors, that's not really very bearish. Yeah. Um, uh, you would expect to see a great deal of bullishness at the top, and you don't see that right now. The advanced decline line, new highs, new lows, are in relatively good shape. They usually top out months before the market does. So no, I think the market will recover, but it will make a more significant high at the end of July, beginning of August, a two-month decline, and then a rally into the end of the year. You, you uh, have some other ideas about uh, precious metals and the dollar. You, th you see strength in the dollar, which has been weak for stocks, at least in the last two years. That's correct. It all ties together. The gold intermediate cycle tops right here on June 3rd and declines for about a month. Now, in the past, over the past couple of years, because we've been in a bull market in gold, the worst we've seen is about a 7 to 8 percent sell-off. I guess that's what it's going to look like here. In other words, it will look like last December when the market, uh, the gold market topped in late November and declined and then rallied back again. Silver, though, I expect to fall by a greater percentage than gold in the next month. What is it qualitatively about silver that makes it fall greater than gold? Well, gold has a monetary value, and if you read any book in late stages of inflation, uh, and I mentioned this in my monthly letter, I quoted the book, that substitution takes place. People move away from paper dollars. I have a friend here in town whose artwork is selling uh, hand over fist because people just don't want to hold on to paper money or paper denominated assets. They want hard assets. How about gold's eventual top? Does your work give any indication where the eventual high of the bull market could be? I would recommend, as I've been in my newsletter for years, just holding on to gold and gold-related assets. But I do believe all commodities will take a sharp drop next year, 2012. I don't think that's the end of the commodity bull market. I think it's a sell-off like 2008. It will rally again. But next year will be pretty scary. So I think the high in gold is off in the latter part of this decade. Rumors of the death of the bond market have been greatly exaggerated. We got yields sure on the 10 percent below three per, uh, on the 10-year yeah. below three percent now. Um, is this just a reaction to some bad economic news, or is there some real strength in bonds here? They sense a QE3 coming? There's not a real strength in bonds. The government, through the central bank, holds all the cards. They can increase the supply of money as much as they want, which depresses the interest rate, depresses the price, and that's what's happening. It, uh, lower rates, are higher bonds, and May, June is the weakest time seasonally to hold bonds. In addition to that, my cycle is down, and yet bonds haven't fallen. So I had to switch from a sell to a buy here because in June you're at the annual seasonal low, just like you're at an annual seasonal low for stocks in October or gold in August, it's June for bonds. So it looks like bonds will probably be up uh, next three to six to nine months. Wow. So you think then, uh, your, your portfolio, you've got a pretty concentrated portfolio with, yes. with ultra gold in it and you yes. just sold IBM uh, after a decent gain. What, what got you out of IBM? The stock is the second most oversold on a monthly basis as it has been since 1963. That means risk is high. Number two, if you take spectral analysis, which I do, and apply it monthly, the cycle tops right now and turns down. IBM runs on a 16-month cycle. The last time it topped, IBM simply went sideways. That's what I call return-free risk. All I'm right. not going to hold it if it goes sideways. sideways. I'll look for something else or hold cash. All right. Well, you're a market technician as well as an astrologer, astronomer. Astrologer, I okay. suppose. So you, th this month, there are three eclipses, two lunar, I'm sorry, two solar and one lunar. Lunar's in the middle of the month. We had a June one and we got a July one uh, solar. What's, what does this mean, though, well, in your work? Anything? The effective eclipses have been greatly exaggerated. I wrote a book in 95, which I never published. Only one out of every three eclipses from 1885 right through to 1995 has had any sort of an effect on the market at all. Uh, but the, uh, the first one that occurred usually occurs around a low while the market actually topped. And the uh, lunar one is actually quite bearish for the 10 days to going in and quite bearish for the 10 days going out on a historical basis. In other words, I checked them back uh, to 1885. And the one coming up after that is bullish. So this confirms my cycle projection of a down month, a low in the third or fourth week of June, and then a rally. So the second and third eclipses uh, do support that thesis. So the most attractive times, you think, for equity investors to put more money or get any money at all into the market later this summer, later in July? Later in June. 
Later in June. For a rally up until about July 30th, August 1st. 